Okay, I'm Emily Hahn, and for my experiment, I decided to do egg in a bottle. Um, so this is my egg. The three things you'll need is an egg, a bottle with a slightly smaller hole than your egg, and something to burn and to put in the bottom of the bottle. Um, I tried it already once, so that's why it's burned. Um, so in this experiment, I'm teaching about air pressure. I would have my students make a hypothesis of what, write a hypothesis down of what they think is going to happen when I light a piece of paper and put it at the bottom of the bottle and put the egg on top. Then I would have them write down what they think air pressure is and what they think it means. So I would have them um, define air pressure. And after they did that, I would have them go ahead and do the experiment. So I want to first, I want my egg to be wet. You want the egg to be damp. Okay, and then you want to light the paper. And I lit it already, like I said. Put that in the bottom of this. And then put the egg on top. And you can see it's really trying to squeeze through. Oh! Oh! There it goes. Okay. <laughs> the egg got pulled through, and you can see most of the egg is down in the bottle. So I got too small of a bottle, obviously, but um, so this skin part got left up here. If I did it with my real students, I would have the right size bottle, but this is the only one that I could find. Um, but you can see it sucked down almost all of the egg. Just this last part of skin up top got left off just because it was um, it was just not big enough. Um, so what it was was there was pressure pushing down and pressure inside the bottle but once we got rid of the oxygen then that was just all the air pressure was so great down here then it sucked the egg down through the bottle. So I would have my students, um, after they did this experiment, I would um, try to explain air pressure and I would tell them air pressure is a force that consistently surrounds us and I would give them examples like at sea level we do not notice the air pressure pushing down around us from all sides, but um, as we travel below air pressure, the air pressure increases. And if we're um, above sea level, then the air pressure then decreases. So, like, for instance, a climber that is on Mount Everest usually um, use bottle, bottled oxygen to compensate the lack of oxygen and air pressure. Whereas, like, um, someone that's diving would... Um, Someone that is diving below sea level then would uh, use compressed air. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Someone that's diving below water uses compressed air because there's so much air pressure down below the sea level. And um, the higher you get, the less and less and less it is because there's no oxygen down there. And up high at Mount Everest, there's a lot of oxygen. So that is kind of how this happened. Um, after I explained what air pressure was and the procedure, did the procedure, I would um, then have the students go ahead and tell me what happened, why this happened, which I kind of already explained, but um, they would say because of the lack of oxygen, the egg was sucked down, the air pressure was so great that the egg was sucked into here because 
the air pressure down here was so much greater than the air pressure out here, it just sucked it down like a vacuum. Um, and then I would have the students go back over their hypothesis and tell me if they were right or wrong and kind of evaluate each other. And that's how I would do that experiment. Thank you.